అందరికీ నమస్కారములు నమో నమ శుభోదయం టుడే ఈజ్ అనదర్ గుడ్ డే ఫర్ ఫర్ అస్ అండ్ విఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ సమ్ వెబినార్ క్లాసెస్ ఆన్ మహాభారత ఫ్రమ్ డాక్టర్ నాగరాజారావు గారు సో ఫార్ వీ హ్యావ్ హ్యాడ్ అరౌండ్ థర్టీ సెవెన్ వెబినార్స్ వాట్ ఆఫ్ విచ్ వీ వీ లెండ్ వేదాస్ వేదాంగాస్ ధర్మశాస్త్రాస్ ఉపనిషత్స్ దర్శనమ్స్ అండ్ వైదిక్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ షోడో సనాతన ధర్మ షోడస సంస్కారములు నౌ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ క్లాసెస్ ఆన్ మహాభారత ధర్మ సూక్ష్మములు ఇన్ మహాభారత వీ ఆల్రెడీ హ్యాడ్ ఫోర్ త్రీ క్లాసెస్ నౌ దిస్ ఈ ద ఫోర్త్ క్లాస్ and tomorrow after that we are going to have classes on mahabhar uh, sorry ramayanam and then some classes on vastu and also homam and some research topics after that we will have yoga classes for another one hour for one one month so this is how we are going to proceed now uh, we will have vanda uh, vande mataram after that prarthana then we will start with our uh, webinar let's uh, stand up vande mataram vande mataram sujalam sukalam శ్యామలాతరం వందే మాతరం శుభ్రజ్యోష్ణాపులకిటయామిణి పుల్లకుసుమితృమదళచోభిని సుహాసిని సుమధురభాషిణీ సుఖదాం వరదాం మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం చల్లా చిట్టిబాబు గారు ధన్యవాదములు ధన్యవాదాలు అనంతంజీ అనంతం గారు can you chant prarthana for all of us yes yes sir hari om hari one minute one minute meditation let us close our eyes sit erect just concentrate on breath observe the body as any other ob- object this body is a great blessing to us to fulfill fulfill our all wishes next one and a half hour i shall be concentrating on the class i will give auto suggestion to myself om గణపతి గుంహవామహే కవింకవి నాముపమశ్రవస్తమం 
ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पत आन शृण्वन्नोपीद साधन महागणपत नम प्रणो देवी सरस्वती वाजे निर्वाजिनी वतीनामित्रवतु वाग्देव्य नम गुरव गतिर्गुम भजे गुरुन सहास्मी नमो गुरवे अगुरो परम शिशुरस्म गुरो मतिरस्ति गुर मम पाहि गुरो ज्ञानंदमय देव निर्मल स्फटिकाकृति आधारम सर्व हयग्रीव मुस्मे श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणा करुणाल नमा भगवत् पाद शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सुत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीक वहै तेजस्वी नवदीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वहै ओ शाते शाते शाति हरि ओ श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ धन्यवाद लेट रिक्वेस्ट नागराज राव गुजार दोबीना प्लीज विष्णु शचिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यानोपात सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुर परंपरा नारायण नमस्कृत नर चोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यासम तथो जय मुदीर शुभोदय गुड मॉर्निंग टू आल ऑफ यू टुडे वेरी आस्पीशियस डे कार्तिक सोमवार एंड ऑल ऑफ यू आर असेंबल्ड हियर आई वाज एंड द ओपिनियन एंड ऑल द लास्ट थ्री डेज दैट All of you are from India only. I thought, but majority of the only got the information that majority of you are logging from Canada, USA, and Abu Dhabi and all these places. Vedha Samskrta Samiti is doing a great service to the humanity as a whole, propagating the message of this Sanatana Dharma to different places across the world as a whole. This is really wonderful, and I am also blessed that. Uh, I am, I am associating with the group of scholars, great scholars, sitting here, listening to me. With limited knowledge, whatever I, I, I talk, also you are listening and you are actually giving me a lot of opportunity to tell certain things. Here, here thing is, sir, Sanatan Dharma. When because I, out of the way, I am telling. When I started Mahabharata, telling to children because my one one my blog and all these things. youtube and all these things people started telling so many persons have already told the story why you are telling the story again like that because for answer is only one thing and answer is that mahabharata happened 5000 years back it has been given to generations after generations by different types of persons their own perspective they are giving they are giving one perspective is very good perspective only they are giving it is being spread like that There are many persons. Even now, also people tell that there are so many persons are there in other places, other places also. They are teaching Mahabharata. Why we are teaching again? Why we should teach again? Means the only thing is that there are, there is much in Mahabharata. This is each person can understand only little only out of that. 
if a person, one person can take one part full of Mahabharata, another person may take a spoonful of Mahabharata, and the other person may be speaking, just touch it and taste it and do away like that. So whatever you take, you, you will be taking. And one more thing is that going on spreading is our duty. Even I, what I expect from all of you is that after listening to all these lectures and all this is another dharma has to be spread like that. Otherwise, uh, who, will, uh, who will give the message to the future generations of the people? So another Vedic, uh, this Samiti, Vedic Samskrita Samiti is doing an excellent service in that way and I am very much thankful to it. And then I will start my lecture, today's lecture. Mahabharata, so far, it is a very big subject. Mahabharata is a very big subject. Out of that, only few things only we will be discussing here and there. Maybe all these days we were discussing Mahabharata, the traditions one day we discussed. Overall picture of Mahabharata we were discussed in the first day. Then we also discussed uh, some sort of what Dharma Sushmatas we discussed. Today, what I propose to do is I uh, want to discuss uh, maybe some issues connected to the can Mahabharata be applicable? People will, it is applicable for all the generation. That is why only it is called Sanatana. Definition of Sanatana doesn't mean that it is old. Sanatana is eternal, what we tell all the time. Because it is there in the present, it is there in the future, it was there in the past like that. So in that way, Mahabharata is relevant for all the days to come. But there are certain questions sometimes people will be asking how it is relevant for today's life. Is it not advocating violence? Some sort of questions will be there. Those type of things also we will be discussing maybe at the end. Maybe initially as I used to do normally in any podium, my way of telling is only just tell a story. Even great people have already told, no, this is Jyotha Prasangya Pada, Kaliya Jyotha Prasangya like that. We start our day with discussing some story only. After telling the story, maybe one more story. Story will be very brief because the known story. Known story I will be telling very briefly, I will be telling. And then I will be telling one more small story I will be telling. And try to understand the entire uh, government of Mahabharata. A little, in a little way, because one, one way of, because we, so far we have not touched philosophy and Mahabharata, we have not touched. Maybe in the last class we will be touching philosophy, Surga, Naraka, Mocha and all these things we will be touching. Tomorrow, it is the final day. We will be discussing today. I will be discussing some sort of Rajaniti. I will be discussing Rajaniti in Mahabharata, some Abad Dharma, and different situations how people have to behave. All these things uh, we may be discussing in this story. The story is a very popular story. Maybe many people, this story is actually Bhima marrying Hidimba. This is the story. But uh, uh, not only this story, one more story also I will be telling subsequently. Let us start this story because you, everybody I think knows the story that is why I will be just pushing on this story in a very fast fashion. We all know that uh, the Lakshagruha Dahana took place. That is all Pandavas were there in Varanavatam. At the time with the help of Purochana, Duryodhana wanted to destroy the entire place by means of putting fire to it. Ultimately, who put the fire and all this is, in fact, in the Mahabharata story, it, it is told that Bhima only has put the fire because they knew earlier that uh, Duryodhana ha had hatched a plot to kill all these persons. Because of this reason, on the appointed day, at the appointed time, just before to that, because Purochana has put some time, this is the time I am going to destroy all these persons like that. Maybe some half an hour earlier he woke up. They he only put the fire for it and they escaped from the passage. They escaped from the passage and they came out to a forest. This we know. <coughs> when they came to that place, it was a thick forest thick forest. In the thick forest they, they were going on like that. Here, when they walked, walked and all these things. And sometimes Bhima was carrying and all these things we know the story. When they came to the forest, Kunti was very much thirsty. She was telling that I am the mother of all these warriors. I am the aunt of Sri Krishna. 
that lady, I am now suffer, suffer, this got for the thirst. I am thirsty and I, there is no water around. She was also weeping like that. Mima felt very bad. He consoled all those persons, asked them to sit there, and he wanted to find out water. When he was trying to find out the water, what happened was that in the, in the other time, there was a how to find water in that particular spot. And you see how beauty in Mahabharata is that each and a small and minutest aspects are also written down. A thick forest, where is, where is water, you can't find it. But he was hearing, the Bhima was trying to listen the sounds of the water birds. And then he wanted to find the place where water is available. So uh, this is, I'm telling is that the depth of Mahabharata I'm telling. Then he was trying to listen. He listened the voices of uh, this Jalapachis and he listened to it and he tried to go in that direction and he found a big lake that is mentioned in Mahabharata. Very beautiful because certain portions of Mahabharata you have to read very carefully, you have to read it. Then he went there and he found the water. He found the water and he took bath in it because in the throat, the night they walked through, they were totally tired. He took bath, he drank water. He wanted to bring water, there is nothing he said. How to bring water? Then uh, what was mentioned in Mahabharata is that uh, he took out his uh, uttariyam, that is called towel, what we can call, maybe in the simplest fashion. He took out the uttariyam, which he was wearing. He soaked it in the water. And the soaked one, he brought it to the place of Kunti Pandavas, where they were staying. Be here, in, uh, of course, in Telugu Mahabharata, it is a little bit deviated from this one. Nanaya has written down that. And uh, he, when he was bringing the water, he took it from the place of what is called Tamara. Tamara is there, no, that is a lotus petals. He took it out. In the lotus petals, he made a small bowl type of thing. And then there he put the water. And doing that, he has put it in the towel and he brought it like that. He has converted that particular story. But in version of Mahabharata, it is not written down like that. Mula Vayasa, what we get, Mula Mahabharata. He brought it like that only. And here, what we have to find is that it is. Uh, it is according to dharma shastras and smritis and all these things it is not permitted to take water which is soaked in soaked with the uttari uh, towel and all these things it is not supposed to be done but which he has done it is actually they say that it is upper dharma to protect the lives is more important what you are doing is secondary here when there is no possibility of bringing water in a vessel and all these things the twin of forest they are totally new to that place finding the water place itself is a great task and then he was bringing water there then whatever means is there that has to be brought that is called apad dharma this is applicability of mahabharata we are, we are discussing he brought it like that even though it is sin he knows it bhima is a person who knows all these things very well dharma, dharma shastras and all these things many places in mahabharata we find all these things he brought it like that whether they have taken or not, that is immaterial. He brought it for the purpose of drinking and by the time they slept. That was the condition. He was guarding all these persons, all the way thinking that uh, what fate we have got. And fate, it is, we are destined to stay here. Thinking and he was in that way only he was in that in that mood at the time it so happened that my internet is okay because here I am getting your internet connection is not stable like that it is coming. No, it's okay. Going on. It is okay. Yeah, it's it is okay. okay. It is okay. Then he was coming like that. When he was coming like that, he, he was standing like that, guarding all these persons. By the time we know the other story, rest of the story, there was uh, the forest was actually in the control of one Hedim Basra, he was there, he was having a, a sister, he sent that sister to face these persons, bring those those persons, and then we will kill them and we will have a great feast like that. She went there, she saw Bhimasena, by seeing the famous Bhimasena, by seeing Bhimasena, on the very first sight, she has fallen in love. When she has fallen in love, 
she thought that uh, what her brother was doing is something wrong because all these days she was following him but still when he has uh, when she has seen bhima she was thinking that uh, if i take the these persons all these persons to the place of my brother i may be getting a temporary happiness the temporary happiness of taking the food for one day only but if i marry this man i am going to have a permanent happiness in that way she thought she thought like that and she because she is a asura she converted herself into a beautiful lady and she came very close to him and she was telling that she was actually hidden by even though she is a rakshasi she was coming there and she was telling the truth to bhima sena she was telling i am actually asura lady asura kanya i am coming here i have seen you i have transformed my mind has been transferred transformed i would like to be with you only my brother is a very cruel person if he comes here he will kill all of you please take my hand so that i will take you to a distant place wherein you will be protected by you will be protected from hidimbasura like that she tells her. but himasena was not hearing like that but she was telling that then yeah, my brother is sleeping my mother is sleeping my sisters are sleeping leaving them how can i go i can't go like that then she tells i will take all of them i will take all of them you also i will take i will protect you i will take all of you to a distant place where my brother cannot identify there i will be keeping you and i will protect you like that then he was and was again not willing to tell he was telling that i am having the ability to kill that person i can kill gandharvas rakshasas whoever it may be because of my mind my might he was he was having such a confidence he was having at the time she was telling no no my brother is not that he is a great you marry me like that she started telling all these things then bhima was telling one thing bhima was telling that i can't deviate or transgress the dharma Because Dharma says that the elder brother has to marry first, then only I should marry. I am not going to marry you. What will what what will happen? What what will happen to me in the society as a whole? I will become a parivetta. Parivetta, I tell you what is parivetta and all these things. So then she was telling that I I will be attracting the sin by marrying you. I am not supposed to deviate the Dharma because here beauty of Mahabharata again is that each and every place. Each and every conversation, they first see whether it is permitted by dharma or not permitted by dharma. That is the greatness of this entire story. If you read the entire, whichever story you read, and whichever place you come across in Mahabharata, first they will be discussing dharma, whether it is dharma or adharma. Then sometimes, then adharma also they will be invoking. And they will be following the rules because, for that matter, I can be telling this is when Sain Dhawa is here. When Sain Dhawa wanted to abduct uh, Draupadi from the forest, what he was telling is that he was by force. She was grabbing her, putting her in the chariot, and he was going. Pandavas were in the Vana Vasa. Vana Vana Parva we come across this story. In the Vana Parva. he wanted to grab her he wanted to grab her and he wanted initially she he asked i wanted to marry you because you are very beautiful i am so and so the husband of dusala jayadratha and i want to take you like that she says that it is not permitted it's adharma because you are actually my husband's sisters husband my husband sister husband is dharmaraja is husband Duryodhana is husband's brother only, and again Dushala is also husband's sister only. And for her, you are a married, you you are husband. So I am not supposed to marry. You are we you. It is other my again because I am already a married woman. All these things she will be telling her mother, her mother she will be telling. At the time he will tell, jewels and ladies and beautiful ladies are the possession of the king. This is dharma like that. Because jewels, I all all of you know, jewels even if you are having a lot of property. and then if you are digging something in the in your own area and if you are finding jewels the jewels belong to the government only even now also similarly she was telling that the jewels and, and the ladies are the prized possessions of king only like that he tells that he invokes that dharma because you are also a jewel because you are also a jewel i am taking you like that in that way he grabbed her and he was taking because here whether he was correct or not i am not telling what he is telling is that he is trying to invoke some sort of dharma 
and under the shield only he wanted to go out and here also same thing but by bhima of course it is a right thing only he was telling he was telling that i am not going to deviate dharma and i will be following the dharma only by the time what happened is that hidimbasura is about to come at the time she alerts at least you wake them up he was saying that i don't want to wake them up because i believe in my strength he was there only and then he came and then bhima sena caught hold of him took him to a distant place the fighting took place and hidim basra was killed that we know the story by the time all these persons woke up they praised bhima sena and from that place by the time kunti was asking who you are like that this lady was telling the real story only she was telling i actually loved him i am asura kanya please help me like that but how she can decide they were going on like that when they were going on like that they were moving from that place to other place and hidimba was also following as usual arjuna was going in the front all other persons are going in the back and bhima sena was in the back protecting all these persons behind bhima sena she was also coming she was continuously pleading you marry me then bhima sena was telling no it is you are actually a sura lady and your brother is killed by me only now just now and you will be having that revenge you will be having any time any time you may attack us that is why i don't want to marry you should also be killed right now like that you will be telling Baraja comes and tells her, oh, "Bhima Sena, what are you doing? Do you know you are not supposed to kill a woman? It is again a sin." He was telling at that time he got a clue and she was coming to Dharma Raja and also she was coming to Dharma Raja and also Kunti and she was pleading, "I am a person. I really sincerely love this man. Please understand my difficulty. Understand my difficulty and say ensure that I left my brother and I came to you." Saranagata also again. Here I am coming to you, and I am before him. If the, she she is not married, the only alternate for alternative for me is death only. I will not survive in this world. And one more thing, I am telling you is that I am actually I I have some vidya by means of which I can see the past, present, and also the future. I can see. I know from now by now I know that you have been there. You have been suffering great ordeals in life. because of the hatch uh, plot has by duryodhana you know it duryodhana has put you in the lakshagruha and it was fire and it was scorched in ashes and you came out and you are traveling like that all this st- story she will tell now she will tell and also she will also be telling that uh, in future by once this is over you will be going to a place where in you will be meeting vedavyasa in a particular ashrama and all these things she will be telling and then she will also be telling that uh, i have the ability because you are in difficulties right now when you are in difficulty it is dharma to adopt a procedure by means of which you can come out of this difficulty see this is how uh, nicely she was putting you are in difficulty to come out of this difficulty you can you can adopt a strategy by means of which you can come out of this difficulty maybe when you are in trouble i am in the position to take you to the distant places and say safe guard you i can protect you when you are in apramatta situation apramatta means when you are actually not safe guarding yourself properly at that time also i can protect you and i can take you to a distant place all this is she was telling when she was telling and and it is dharma for a person to adopt a strategy particular strategy what is the strategy she was suggesting you can marry you can ask bhima sena to marry me so that i will be one of your family members so that you will be having lot of help from me this is also she was hinting like that this was how she was talking she was talking only dharma she was talking she never told untruth she was telling truth only and she was also sincere in love seeing all these things kunti thought for a while and she looked at dharma raja and she was telling my dear son the situation you have seen she is a girl she is a girl she she is a lot of fashion or what is called she is totally now she is under she is not under her senses and she is totally loving bhima sena this is one thing and she is also talking dharma even though she is asura she she is talking dharma only she is talking but here at that situation is it possible for her to marry bhima sena then dharmaraja 
Atwari Bai, he told, yes, I also permit, because I am permitting. And then she asked that lady, oh lady, I permit you to marry Bhima Sena. You can marry Bhima Sena, but I'll be putting you a condition. The condition is that you can take him to any place morning, you can take him around to any place of your choice, enjoy with him. By the time Sayankalam comes, that is called Sandhya comes in the evening, you have to bring him back. This is the condition. So this is uh, what is what is the condition he is putting here? The condition he is putting, he is a very peculiar condition he is putting. You are not supposed to take him in the night. He is just married lady. He is going to marry Bhima Sena. <clears throat> when she is going to marry Bhima Sena, she is not supposed to spend any, any night with him. You have to take him in the morning, bring him back by evening. This is the condition put by Dhammaraja. She agreed for it. When she agreed for it, <clears throat> then Dharmaraja turns to Bhima Sena and he tells, don't argue continuously about Parivetta. What is Parivetta, please? Parivetta means, uh, I'll show you one small uh, shloka that is from, uh, again, Manusmruti. What is meant by Parivetta? One minute, I'll be sharing it. Sharing. Sharing where it is there. Now here it is there. Share the screen. I think you are seeing the screen, no? Yes, yes. Parivitti hi parivetta yayacha parividyate sarvete narakam yanti datru yajaka panchamaha like that it is there. Which means that parivetti hi, the superseded elder brother, this is also I have mentioned here. The superseded elder brother, that is Arma Raja. Then parivetta. The superseding younger brother, that is called Bhima Sena. Yayacha Parivityate, by means of whom the Parivitya has happened, that is a Hidimba. Sarvete Narakamyanti, Dhatru, Dhatru means a person who has given that particular lady in marriage, that is normally father or brother, whoever it may be. Here nobody is there for Hidimba, of course. If at all the father is alive, if he is doing this type of thing, he will also be attaining Naraka and then Yajaka, the person who comes as a Purohita and will be performing the marriage, he is also, all these five persons will be going to Narakam. That is what is mentioned by, it is called, I think, third chapter of 172, 172 Shloka I have mentioned here, the chapter I have not mentioned here. Anyway, this is, I think, Manusprati third chapter, I believe. This is third chapter, 172 Shloka, it says that Parivitthi Parivetta Yeyacha Parivityate Sarvete narakam yanti dhatru yajaka panchamaha like that it is there. Here, what they are trying to tell is that Parivetta, if at all Bhima is going to marry a girl when Dharmaraja is not just is not yet married, at that time Bhima will become a Parivetta. Bhima is going to Naraka and Dharmaraja will be going to Naraka and then uh, Idimba will be going to Naraka and then the person who is doing the what is Kapaur Paurohitya. Maybe in this case, maybe Paurohita is not there. Of course, even then, the person who is promoting this aspect, that is Kunti, all these persons will go to Naraka. Bhima doesn't want to go to it. He was, it is argument was the same thing from the beginning. I don't want to deviate from Dharma. I don't want to become a Parivetta, he is telling. But Dharma Raja is telling, no problem. I am permitting you. You can marry. Don't argue with me. That is also his telling. Then what to do then? Bhima Sena ultimately agreed, okay, Bhima Sena is one person who has to listen to his brother also, he has to listen. Because it is a duty of the, any brother is, of course, he is as good as father only. He has to listen to Dharma Raja. So he listened to him and agreed to marry this lady. And then turning to that lady, he was telling, 
Oh, he didn't buy. I'm putting a condition to you. He was also putting a condition. The condition is that I will be with you only to, to certain extent because uh, when you deliver a baby at that time, when a child is born, the day is the last day for us. Then I will leave you. I will go on my own way. Is it acceptable? It is my condition. She agreed for that also. She agreed for that also. She married with Bhimasena. And of course, original Mulavya Mahabharatam, it is not mentioned whether the marriage took place or not took place. She took the hand because Kunti was telling Bhimasena that you take, the, for the purpose of dharma, you take this lady, you take the hand of this lady and give birth. For in the, you can bless a child for her. In that way, only she will be telling when marriage took place or not took place. It is elaboration was not there in Mahabharata, of course. And then subsequently, what happened is that she was delighted. She took Vimasena and she went out. When she went out, they, they roamed around the mountain ranges, water ridges, river valleys, and all these places she took. In the distant places, very beautiful spots, and all these places. They spent for one year, and ultimately, she conceived. And then, Rashasa city is told that once they conceive, when they conceive, immediately delivery also takes place. So, immediately delivery took place, and a boy was born. The boy was actually with Ghatta, is there. No, Ghatta means uh, a pot, his head was like a pot. Then again, the, the hair was erect over it. A few hair was there, erect hair was there. Kacha, what we call that is standing hair. Standing hair was there, three or four hair was there, and over this ghatam. Because of this region, she looks like a ghato, ghatam, his head is like a ghatam, and the head's rise, hair is rising. Because in this reason, immediately was, his name was put as Ghatot Kacha, the name was put to him. He was like that. Then immediately, they came down. Dr. Dutkacha immediately became a big, big person. And he was uh, I was prana, putting pranams to Dharmaraja, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula Sahadeva, all these persons. They blessed all those persons. Then she, he was asking, then uh, Kunti was telling, you are the elder son for our entire family. And you need to protect all of us whenever it is required. Then he agreed, yes, I will be protecting you all the time. You believe it or not, he was also telling, there are Ravanasura was there earlier. And Ravanasura, whatever strength was there for Ravanasura, to that strength I am having. And I am also as Balashali, it is called as strong as my brother, my father also. So I can be for help for you at any point of time. You just call me aloud and I will be at your place, feet. Like that he tells. And then he takes his mother. Both of them would have been goodbye and they will be going out. This is the story. And then here the questions are many questions are there here. What are the things that are being done here? And here, that things that are done here is called here. One is called Parivetti, Parivetta, the, the sin of Parivetta, that is one way it is there. And then uh, it is some sort of cross marriage that is called one ma marriage is between a man, a human, a human being, and an Asura that is there. And then uh, Diva Sangamam is there. Diva Sangamam means the Bhima and Bhidimba will be meeting in the morning times, not in the night times. All are the, not Adharmas only. All are Adharmas only. Then why these Adharmas are actually prompted by Dharma, the Kunti and promoted by Dharma Raja? And there are also the Dharmic persons again. Dharma Raja has not committed any sin. Kunti has not committed any sin, people tell. What is the reason behind it? The reason behind it is that in Mahabharata, frequently we come across this type of situations wherein there is an apparent adharma is there. When an apparent adharma is there, but you, what you need to do is that you have to take into the total picture you need to take all the time. The total picture is always important than the individual thing that is mattered. Because you need to, because in a war is there, in a war is there, it is not enough if you are going to, even if you lose the battles, it is fine. You need to win the war, that is more important. Here also same thing, the picture is overall picture, what is dharma and adharma is dharma sushmata, what we can call. Sometimes adharma is dharma and dharma is adharma, like that Yudhishthara only will be telling in some other occasion. 
here it appears to be <coughs> all these things are adharma only because uh, even now also our scriptures are ayurvedic tests and all these things will be prohibiting um, the mating of uh, purusha and stri in the morning times it is not permitted actually it is only in the nights but why this is being done and then again marriage between asura and also this person why it is done asura on one side and uh, manava on the one side it is also not permitted all these uh, mistakes appear to be mistakes only and then again earlier also i told that bringing of water in the uttariyam that is also not permitted which is of course i told it is actually abhadharma like that here also what is more important is that here we come across the raja dharma and also abhadharma both are involved here raja dharma and abhadharma here what you have to understand is that pandavas are in very difficult situation at that time why they were sent out from Hastinapura? They were sent out from Hastinapura precisely for the reason that Duryodhana does not want all these persons to stay in Hastinapura and gain people's support and all these things. By the time Dharmaraja was a Yuvaraja. But even then he was earning a lot of fame, name and all these things by virtue of his great deeds. People love him, respect him and all these things it was happening. Duryodhana was thinking that he was denied the opportunity of having the throne. That is also there because in fact the throne doesn't belong to Dhritarashtra also. Because the crowned king was Panduraja only. The crowned king was Panduraja only because Dhritarashtra was a Nanda. When he was a Nanda, he cannot claim the throne. It was not given to him at all, first of all. That is the reason why even before when Dhritarashtra was born, Satyavati told on the spot itself because he is Anda, he cannot rule the entire Hastinapura. Because of this reason, I want one more buy. Because of this reason, Vedavyasa was asked to go to Ambalika. And Ambalika, through Ambalika, Pandraja was born. And Pandraja was the king. He, he was a crowned king. And once the kingdom was given to Pandraja, then it is the, the, who holds the kingdom has been already decided upon. Dhritarashtra is no more a king. When Dhritarashtra is no more a king, Dhritarashtra's son cannot become a king. The giving of Angarajam to Karana was wrong. All these things you have to see from the perspective, from that perspective only. When Duryodhana was giving, impetuously he was giving that Raja which he, does, he doesn't have it. The thing which he is not having it, he has given to some other person who enjoyed it. That is the storyline here. But here, Duryodhana wanted to send him out. When he was sending, wanted to send him out, he has a plot with his father and Dhritarashtra asked them, you come the Yudhishthira, my dear boys, you come here, there is one place by name uh, uh, Varanavatam is there, you go there, you enjoy there, a festival is going on like that, he tells them and he asked them to go out. Pandava sensed it and Dharmaraja was very much knowing that we are not liked by these persons. They were having a legal right, but the possession is in the hands of Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana only, that is the problem. Legal rights and possession rights are something different, different place. All the time we have to understand. There is a, there may be a land, the big land you may be having the possession, what is called legal right you may be having. Possession you are not having. Possession is a more important, that is also important. Legal rights are also important, but possession is also important. Dharmaraja was not having the possession. Legal rights he was having, but no use. They were sent to that place. There they wanted to kill these persons by putting, by scorching the entire place. Then if they come out and tell the truth that these people have done like that, there is no proof, evidence to prove that the fire was put by Duryodhana. There is no evidence. People may think that people Pandavas are telling something wrong. Even if they come out also, what will happen? Duryodhana will chase them wherever they are there and employ all means to kill these persons. That was the plan. So they should not come out and proclaim to the world as a whole that we are alive. They wanted to live in that bliss for some time at least. They wanted to be in peace because they don't want to reveal their identity at that time. They want, if they reveal their identity, they may be killed. So they are in a weak situation until they gain the great position because by virtue of Draupadi's marriage, they gain strength at that time only they reveal their identities. That is a subsequent story will come across. Yeah, they don't want to reveal their identity. Uh, that is why they were working like that. If in this situation, the imminent war, if it is going to happen in future, Dharmaraja was having in mind very clear in, in his thoughts 
vaccines that one day or other day there may be war if at all any war comes and on the side of duryodhana because he know he knows the attitude of dharma duryodhana he knows the attitude of dhritarashtra if they hatch some plot and if at all any war is there they are having already so many rakshasas on their side we don't have any rakshasa on our side one rakshasa should be there in our side so if at all diva sangama happens normally people tell that the morning meeting of purusha and stri will result into asura only so asuric properties that is why we come across a story in one more story we come across wherein aditi aditi two persons are there in mahabharata kashyapa's wives and aditi approaches aditi approaches kashyapa at the appropriate time and she got aditya that is gods and aditi approaches in the sayam sandhya she comes that is called before dawn before dusk she comes there and approaches kashyapa kashyapa tells what time you are coming and asking me this book you are requesting me to have children this is not the time but still you are asking but you will be having the persons of that nature only she blessed her and immediately she got children all the daityas that is rakshasa she got so this is diva sangama is not permitted even now also in ayurvedic tests also if you go there all the places it is mentioned that it is not permitted but here why it is being asked by dharmaraja because dharmaraja wanted only an asura here an asura should be there on this side and one more thing is that why in why not in the night in the night again the asuric pravrtis asura will be dominant edimba will be dominant at that time when edimba was dominant and maybe the bhima may not be dominant at that time the person who is born in the night who is conceived in the night and born that person may be having asuric pravrtis narmaraja wanted a son who is an asura at the same time who will be having some dharma also to be on their their, their side only all these things he thought okay this is diva sangama he permitted for bhimasena and hidimba is she agreed and she went out like that and this is rajaniti rajaniti is important one more thing is that it is apad dharma for them apad dharma is that they are in difficulties at any point of time there may be a problem immediate problem may be there from any quarter at the time the help of hidimba is very much required she will take them to any spot of that of their choice they will go they will be happily stay there for some time without any disturbance from duryodhana and all these persons all this is he visualized in his things only and parivetta yes okay it is no problem because when parivetta is there the rule is there but i am permitting when the elder brother is permitting even manusmriti itself there are subsequent shlokas tell that if the elder brother is a lunatic if the elder brother person is not virile if the elder person is having some defect in his body and all these situations they have mentioned and all these situations it is okay for the younger sibling to marry a girl like that it is mentioned okay i am now adding one more thing according to me thing is that if elder brother is permitting you can marry nothing wrong in the interest of the what is interest of the total picture if you see that in the interest of our family as a whole it is okay it is apad dharma it is rajaneeti i am doing like this so i am permitting only diva sangama because of this reason as i told earlier this is how dharma raja all these things he will not disclose all these things because in those days all persons are mature enough to understand all this simple implications and significances and all these things he also understood this one and he was telling that his very purpose is that not to marry hidimba he is not interested in hidimba when he is not interested in hidimba dharma raja is asking kunti is asking and one more thing is that there is one more dharma which says that if a lady is continuously asking marry take me in hand for marriage it is no uh, it is not dharma to disown her that is also there you have to marry her but you may tell one thing what happened to surpanaka because whenever you study any thing you have to study from the comparative studies only will be giving you a lot of insights into the picture when surpanaka also in the similar situation when he comes there she will be asking rama to marry why rama is not marrying them the question is the answer is and here here the love of hidimba and the love of surpanaka both we have to compare here mere surpanaka what she did, did was that she was going to rama asking rama tells i am a married person and i don't want to marry you if you want to ask you can ask lakshmana his wife is not here he goes to lakshmana lakshmana says no no 
I am here the servant. I am protecting these persons. Now I can't marry. You want to go to Sharama only? You can ask. You only can help. Then he goes back to Rama. You marry me like that. It is actually. It is not a love. It is actually love. Is only to one person only. Love is actually. You if you love a person, you love only one person only. You can't love too many too many persons. Too many persons. If you begin to love, it is a lust only. So here, the whatever thing that that has been expressed by Shurpana Kai is lust. There it is. Full of lust. She is going to different places. Then she realizes that Sita was an obstacle at that time. She wanted to divorce Sita. If she the Sita is divorced, then I can have Rama. That was her idea there. But that is actually everything Adharma only she was doing at that time. Here, what Hidimba was doing is actually she was she is nothing wrong in loving a person. That is even Hindu Sanatana Dharma will never tell that you should not love any person. Dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamosh kamosh me bharatashafa like that. Sri Krishna proclaims in Bhagavad Gita, a kama that is in tune with the dharma is very my resplendence only. Vibhuti yoga he will be telling. Dharma viruddho kama ha bhutosh me bharatashafa. I am that one. I am that kama. He was telling. He was very much clearly was telling that it when it is not dharma if it is not aviruddha for dharma. If it is not in tune with dharma, that kama is very much me only. I am the resplendent like that. Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells. There is nothing wrong in loving a person. So Hidimba was loving Bhimasena, and she was totally dedicated to him. And when Bhimasena tells, no, I don't want to marry. I don't want to become a parivita. Parivita. Then she is not going to Dharma Raja and asking you, you marry me at least. He was not asking like that. She was telling. If Bhima Sena is not marrying the world, the only alternative for me is death only. He was saying, she was telling. So these things, then all these things, you have to take into picture. Rajaniti is there, then Apadharma is there. The love is actually it is dharmic love only. Then one more thing is that she is going to help in future, and the son that is going to born is only a Rajasa will be born. Rajasa is of great strength for Pandavas. All these things are there conceived in the mind of Duryodhana Kunti and also Dharma Raja and they agreed for the marriage. This is actually what is important is that here the total picture you, have, you need to see at any point of time and then then only you should act. This is the idea given here. Wavering love is there, wavering love is always lust. It is not in Dharma. That is also there. So these these are the things uh, we come across in this story, and also that bringing of water and all these things. So this this is the total picture of this story. Then uh, this type of stories we come across in many places. Apparently there is uh, other dharma, and uh, sometimes other might looks like other dharma, and sometimes it is dharma only. One more story we come across, a similar story we come across, not of this nature of course, some other story. There was a in some other parva we come across. There was a mendicant, a sannyasi of that nature. He was sitting in the forest. He was sitting in the forest. He has taken a pledge. The pledge is that I will be telling only truth. Satyam vada is there. What is there in Vedas? Shruti pramanas. Satyam vada dharmam chara and all these things are Shruti pramanas. I want to follow this. Dharma only. This whatever may be, whatever that comes, I don't want to deviate from the path of dharma. I will be telling truth only. That was his principle. On one occasion, a few villagers were going in the same forest. When they were going in the forest, they were going for a marriage. They were having a lot of jewels, worthy articles, and all these things they were possessing. When they were going like that, a few robbers and thieves ran running behind them, chasing them like that. These persons were running, running, they were also chasing. The villagers came to the place of the this ashrama, and they then there was a lot of disturbance happened. The person who opened his eyes and he saw that these persons were hiding nearby. He saw them. By the time robbers came. And everybody in the village and also in the nearby villages knew that this person is treated as only truth and no untruth. So they told, "Oh Satyavrata, you are you are known for your dharmic thing that is called. You tell only Satyam. Never tell untruth. 
Have you seen any person tasteless? Have you seen any person coming here running like that? Then uh, he was elated because they also praised him. Then he told us, I have seen some persons came here. Then where are they? If you have seen, you have to tell like that. Truth only he has to tell. He told, there they are there. Now immediately they came there, caught hold of them. Some persons were killed and then they robbed the entire art, all those articles and they went out. This man was still thinking that I am following the dictum of principle of I because I because something happened. Okay, but still I am following my Vratam, I am following. It is good. Satyam Vada is there, no, that I am following. Shruti Pramana I am following. But when he wanted to, after his death, when he wanted to go to heaven, he was thrown out of heaven and put in hell only. He was arguing with Yamadharam Maharaja what happened. I was following truth only. I am following the dictums of Vedas. Then what happened? Then he was telling any truth that is associated with the Himsa is not truth. What you have done by virtue of telling truth, you committed a crime. Because of this reason, you are not entitled to come go to heaven. You are destined to be in this hell that to Raurava Naraka. You will be there in the worst type of hell. You will be there here like that. Because you are responsible for the killing of so many persons. So what is dharma and what is adharma here? What is dharma and adharma is that? Sometimes you need to see what is happening here. You need to see what is happening here. You need to understand. Sometimes you tell the untruth, no problem. But when you are telling the untruth, you should have very clearly in your mind that the untruth is going to help some person and not to do harm in for any person. If that is going to do some harm to any person, you are not supposed to tell untruth. This is again one more thing which we come across in Mahabharata. We frequently will be coming across like this. And then one more story also I will be telling because I am seeing the time and I am very Very controversial subject only again. Dharmaraja telling untruth at the time of the killing of Dronacharya. <coughs> Everybody knows this story also. But there are some finer things are there. Some people may be knowing, some people may not be knowing the finer truths. Let us come to the discussion. Thing is that here, and uh, Dharmaraja telling untruth, still he has gone to heaven only. You believe it or not, when Dharmaraja, Mahimasena, Arjuna, Nakula, Sahadeva, all these were going for a Swarga, Swarga, Rohana, Parva, it is there. They were going, walking, walking like that. One after another, people will be falling down. And then uh, Mahimasena was again and again asking, Oh brother, our Draupadi has fallen down. What mistake he has done? She has deviated. Yoga Brashtata happened for him, uh, has happened to her because of this reason she has fallen down. He will be telling Yoga Brashtata. Because she was not there in yoga. It is not there. She was Yoga Brashtata happened because of this reason she has fallen. What is that mistake she has done? Bhimasena was inquiring even that this stage also because everybody was falling down. Everybody was so tired. Going like that, even then also he wanted to know Dharma. When Dharmaraja was telling without turning his back, also he was telling, Oh, Bhimasena, you know that lady, even though we are five husbands for her, she was very much in love with one person that is called Arjuna. That is a mistake she has done. Because she has done that mistake, she has fallen down. Then again, Sahadeva has fallen down. Then he will be telling, Sahadeva, why he has fallen down? Again, same question Bhima will be asking. Then he will be telling, Sahadeva was thinking that he was the embodiment of knowledge, wisdom and all these things. There are many persons in the world who can surpass Sahadeva. But he was having that ego because of this reason he has fallen down. Then Nakula. Nakula has fallen down because he was always thinking that he is the greatest, or is the most handsome person in the world as a whole. Nakula, even among the Pandavas, all the time, many places it is mentioned that Nakula was a very handsome person. Better than Arjuna, better than Bhima, Dharmaraja, whoever it may be, Nakula was the most hand, hand, handsome person. He was thinking that I am the handsome person in the world as a whole. That was his reason he has fallen down. Arjuna, why Arjuna who has, who has even fought with Shiva and God, Pashupatastra, that great person is there, why he has fallen down? He has fallen down because he was also having, having an ego. The ego is that I am the only person can destroy the entire field in Kurukshetra. All soldiers can be killed by me. And how many days? One day only. 
that was his confidence that he, he could not do it also could not do it also in one day he could not destroy all the soldiers that was his ego because he was thinking that he is only person responsible for killing the entire people in the kurukshetra but it is krishna who has actually vanquished all the persons and he is he is having that nature because of this reason his ego he has fallen down bhima was falling on his own and he was telling what happened my my what mistake i have done then he was telling you are a glutton you are eating too much you are eating too much and you are not getting any blood getting that is called you too, too much eater too much of eating is not good because of this reason you have fallen down like that certain different reasons you will be telling and dharmaraj has committed this great mistake what he has given the great mistake he has told the uh, uh, amruta he has told and that to whom he has done against his own guru he has done and against a brahmin again in those days killing a brahmin is actually not good and he is his own guru he has done and he has by telling an untruth he is responsible for the death of one person then why the drone the, the, that indra when he comes there he will be coming in a chariot the chariot is having what is called that the chariot itself is described in such a fashion that even all rajasuyas all ashwamedha yagas if any king performs no person can attain that type of chariot that type of chariot he brings there and he personally he was actually riding that chariot and he was asking the dharmaraja to, to sit in that place and he was taking him the way all this is why all this thing is that he here dharmaraja was telling untruth and then the swargaroha parva we come across a shloka where the, Indra was telling, you will also be, you will taste the feeling of Naraka because, not because you have told untruth, but because you have deceived your Guru. That is what he tells. That is there in Mahabharata, it is there. What is the deceive, how he deceived his Guru? Here, one may argue that it is Apad Dharma to tell untruth in the war, in the battlefield otherwise what will happen if drona as long as drona is possessing the bow and arrows even brahmadeva cannot defeat him that is to that extent he was having the anurveda vidya he was having no one can conquer him as long as he was possessing then astra sastras and all these things only he does astra sanyasa at the time only he can be killed that is there like dharmaraja is meeting him bhishma that we know Dharmasena will, Dharmaraja will also be asking on one occasion with Dharma, Dronacharya, how best you can be defeated. Then he will be telling Dharmaraja, vision, as long as I possess the bow and arrows, no one in this world can kill me. Only thing is that I have to do Astra Sanyasa. Then he will be asking, when will you do Astra Sanyasa? That he will do. He will ask. Then he will be telling, I will be doing Astra Sanyasa whenever I will be hearing some unpleasant word, apriyam. Unpleasant word from the person who is always telling truth. If I listen to the tapriyam word that is enough for me, then I will do astra sanyasa. This is what he has told. That is why Krishna, we, we may feel Krishna is actually doing adharma only. He was telling that he was asking the other, the Dronacharya to, to, to tell and to tell Aswatha Mahataha, you tell like that. He only will be telling. But can Bhagavan tell all these things? Bhagavan is not telling this, uh, what he is telling is that you tell this because it is Apad Dharma. As long as Drona, why he was, Drona has to be killed? Drona is fighting on behalf of Adharmic people. So he has to be eliminated. Because he, here, whenever that is Dharma and Adharma has to be done, it is not the individual personality you have to see. It is the overall picture you have to see. And for what side he is fighting? He is fighting for the sake of the Adhar Adharmic people he is fighting. Who are those Adharmic persons? The Adharmic persons are all these persons, Duryodhana, Dushyas, and all those persons who has put poison, who has cast the, uh, who tried to cast the, all these persons, who took away their land, who has inserted his wife, Draupadi. These type of persons are there on the other side. Those persons he is supporting. That person has to be eliminated. But that person cannot be eliminated as long as he was having a bow. So an untruth has to be told that is called Apad Dharma, Rajaniti, both are there here. So that is why Krishna is telling him only to do this act. But in order to please Dharma Raja, he also tells Vimasyana, you kill an elephant by name Ashwatthama. Then let Dharma Raja tell Ashwatthama Hataha. He never told Dharma Raja that Ashwatthama Hataha Kunjaraha, you tell, he never told, it tells. 
had Dharmaraja told only Ashwatta Mahataha, then what will happen? Dharmaraja would have gone to, would never, he would not have tasted the feeling of Naraka when he goes to that place. Not required because he was telling only Abad Dharma he was doing. Again, Abad Dharma is allowed. Abad Dharma is, as we told in many occasions, we told in Mahabharata, Vidimba, that is Vidimba marriage and all these places and also the other story which I told, all these places, it is okay to tell the truth as long as it is for the for the sake of preserving dharma if that is there in your mind overall picture is there in your mind it is okay had he told ashwatta mahataha there is no problem at all but what he told is that dharma raja used his intellect he wanted to safeguard himself in much more better fashion and he told that ashwatta mahataha in general like that which we know everybody thing is that what happened is that he is actually trying to deceive but here he thing is that Dronacharya comes and inquires with Dharma Raja. Initially, Bhima pronounces Sashwatta Mahataha. He, no problem for him because Bhima is not the person to be relied upon. That is that is the idea of the Dronacharya. But Dharma, the Dronacharya, what he told, when I hear a word, what is called a priya word, when I hear from a person known for his truth, then that is enough. And here he is listening what is called Sashwatta Mahataha. He is listening. Kujaraha, when Dharmaraja told, he wanted to deceive his, because he is not required, deceive, deceiving is not required, Apriya word is sufficient for him to do Astra Sanyasa. He has heard Apriya word from a person who is known for truth, that itself is sufficient for him. And as uh, they uh, kill, whether Ashwatthama is lived, uh, was living or died, it is immediately for Dr Dronacharya. He, he heard Apriya word from the person who is known for truth, that is enough for him. So what happened is that he did Astra Sanyasa, put out his arrow, and he was sitting, starting doing meditation immediately to attain the place of abode, abode of Sarga. He wanted, he said, start like that. By the time, it is, some, some people tell that some Vimashakas, what they tell is that, by the time Vishnadimna came and wanted to cut off his head, severed his head, by the time itself the prana has gone, but it, it cannot be believed because Vishnadimna was born, to kill Dronacharya. That is why we argue. Sometimes Dronacharya also know that Ashwatthama was a Chiranjeevi. Chiranjeevi is there. Uh, what is that? One shloka is there. There are uh, seven persons. Saptaite, Chiranjeevi, Nahalai, that uh, it comes. That is, there are uh, seven people in the world who are Chiranjeevi. I say, I could not recollect that particular shloka. Uh, Ashwatthama, Balirvyasa, Anumasya, Vibhishanaha, Kurupa, Parashuramasya, Saptaite, Chiranjeevi, Nahalai, that it is there. Dronacharya knows it. Anybody tells for that, he need not believe it. Why he believed it? Because he, he believe is not there in the hearing. The belief of Shwatthama being killed is not at all there involved here. Because Dronacharya knows very well that Shwatthama will never be killed by any person. That is why he need not believe it. But what he is, he is reasoning is a priya word from a person who is known for truth. Had he told Apriya word, that is why Krishna is also telling, you tell Apriya word, word only. Ashwatthama Hataha, that is sufficient. That is Apriya for Dronacharya. It is enough for him. You need not tell Kunjaraha, you need not establish all these things. Because you, Dharmaraja did all these mistakes. Because of this reason, he was punished by Indra to go and have a darshan of Naraka for some time and come back. This is the intricacies of Mahabharata. So the thing is that here the overall picture is more important. Why I am telling this overall picture? Adharma, dharma, nature is that uh, there are in uh, the Mahabharata, relevance of Mahabharata we have to understand ultimately. I'm reading all these things sometimes. Uh, we come across in newspapers and all these things. Time I'll just tell It is 7.41. Okay, another five minutes. I can complete. Some 76 years back, there was a case in a Russian court, state Russian judges have given a statement that Mahabhagavad Gita is promoting violence. And uh, there are a couple of my friends who are stationing in uh, USA, uh, particularly, they, were, they used to tell that uh, for children, there is a subject, comparative religion subject is there. And somebody has brought me a textbook also for me, just for seeing. And there, they will be discussing Christianity. 
and uh, other Islam and all other things they will be discussing. At the same time, there is a chapter on Hindu religion also, wherein it is badly portrayed and uh, all these things, Hindu gods are being treated as um, uh, aggressive gods, doing violence and all these things. Bhagavad Gita is also because being the, the, this Krishna is motivating Arjuna to do violence only, do, to do war only, which is actually not in interest of the society as a whole. This type of picture is there like that. Uh, because I have not seen the depth of the books, because sometimes I wanted to have all the books to read it, but I don't have the opportunity to have the books. So, but there was a small book on, uh, I saw on one occasion, that is a third standard textbook. Comparative religions was there at the time. Small mention of uh, Hinduism was there here. And uh, Russian, Court, they were telling that the Russian judges, they were pronouncing the judgment that in Bhagavad Gita is promoting violence. Is it, is it promoting, provoking violence? If at all we want to argue with it, we need to know Mahabharata. Bhagavad always is telling that what is the overall picture is more important. So small matters doesn't matter at that particular space. Why I am telling is Bhagavad Gita we come across a shloka. Nihatya datarashtanaha papri tishya janadhana. Papa may wash the air the small hatvaita atata in a hall like that. Arjuna tells in the very first chapter. Vishada yoga, Arjuna Vishada yoga, somewhere between thirty and thirty seventh, fortieth shloka in between. The shloka will be coming across. Nihatya datarashtanaha papri tishya janadhana. Papa may wash me the tat. Uh, uh, what is called uh, Atvata Natata in a like that. Some, some shloka is there. Uh, shall I read a correct shloka? I will read one minute. What is the book is here only? Uh, thank you. Uh, Nihatya Dhartarashtan Maha Kapitisya Janatana Papa may wash the Sman Hatvaitan Atata in a high history. This means that oh Krishna, by killing all these Dhartarashtras, we will be getting Papa. We will be getting Sinodi, we will be getting. We will be going to Narakam. Even though these persons are Atata Inaha, he will be telling. Atata Inaha, Arjuna was very much knowing that these persons are Atata Inaha. What is the definition of Atata Inaha? Atata Inaha definition is again we come across in different other places we will be coming across. There are six types of sins they will be committing. What are the sins they will be committing? The person who puts poison, the person who scorches the house, the person who takes hold of your property, the the person who takes care of your dhanam, the person who insulted your wife, like that there are some six or seven things are mentioned for the definition of Atatayanas. Dharmara, Dutara, Duryodhana and all these Oravas have done, all these acts they have done. They are worthy to be punished. Those are the pers persons there on the other side. And what is the role of Kshatriya? The role of the Kshatriya is to destroy those type of adharmic persons and establish dharma in the society. That is the idea here. What is Krishna is telling? Krishna is telling that you are a Kshatriya. You have come to the battlefield. Why you have come to the battlefield? You have come to the battlefield in order to establish dharma only and protect the people. There are other, other side of the persons. You only are telling that they are Atatayana. They are, you are telling. When they are Atatayana, it is your duty to destroy them and he, I am asking you to do Swadharma beyond that I am not asking you anything but he is not promoting violence here Krishna is not promoting violence what he is telling is that you have to do because there are two types of sins we will be having in the world one is called sin of commission one is called sin of omission sin of commission is purposefully knowing that it is a sin you commit the sin because you do a crime you lie for no reason and you do whatever mistakes you wanted to do you do purposefully you do it with all your knowledge you will be doing that this is even though it is a crime you will be doing that you are in the helm of affairs and you do this type of affairs this is called sin of commission what we can call and the sin of omission is that a judge is there 
a criminal has come to you, was, asked, was there in the um, court and then he has to pronounce the judgment giving the judgment against the criminal only a police officer has catch hold of a criminal then what a police officer should do he has to punish him only because just because it is a sin uh, to beat him a person means you can't establish dharma in the society that is a sin of omission what you are supposed to do you are not doing when you are in the position and here also the uh, see if arjuna is not participate in the war and he is not killing this dhartarashtra so at that time he will be committing, committing the sin of omission what krishna is telling is that you should not indulge in sin, sin of omission what are they how they should be treated this is how bhagavad gita was started it was never promoting violence this was argued by iskand the case is a russian case uh, this russian judgment case bhagavad gita like that if you come across the case study is there because when i was there in teaching for mba students i wanted to develop a case study for it but somehow my dean and other persons did not permit to use this case study for the purpose in the classroom because it is i wanted to teach it for mba students why because uh, they should know it dharma adharma aspect people should not know that is unfortunately those things are because they are religious things people tell but this is not a religious thing it is a thing to be understood because places like this forum only normally will be telling this type of things because this is a place where it can be discussed debated and only by clash of ideas only we can come out with the truth so here that is the idea here because the, the total purpose of the thing you need to see and then dharma and adharma you have to judge if adharma is going to do some harm dharma is going to do some harm that is not dharma if adharma is there by virtue of doing it if it is going to promote the overall picture of dharma then it is okay these are the ideas that we come across in these two three stories i think now 745 is over 745 is the time for questions and answers and we can uh, i think we can st stop here and we you can uh, ask me if you want to ask because so many questions we discussed so many things we have discussed here today yeah, thank right. you very much nagaraj raghur you have explained so many aspects of dharma and apad dharma that's the most important thing and how we should look at dharma that's the most important thing which is required nowadays and now uh, i think we can uh, take questions uh, uh, chepur gupta garu you can unmute and talk gupta garu okay i can you can unmute and talk yeah now you can unmute Yeah. Uh, Namaskar Mahodaya, you have given a very good examples where there is a critical examine and different people may have different perspectives. I would like to say that because reasoning is not given in the original Mahabharata, people pursue the things the way they want to pursue. And the victor always pursues in a particular way, the loser will pursue in a particular way. So whatever you have mentioned, I may not perceive in the same light. Then am I doing adharma? Critical test for that matter. What I can tell is that, and I think in the first class itself, I told that normally for reading these things, by reading itself you can't understand dharma. Sir, that is one thing. What I believe. That is in the first very first class. I told that. There are some people who will be telling that uh, I'll I have read Bhagavad Gita and took the book of Iskand and I read it. But if you read Bhagavad Gita, you can't understand it unless you go to Guru. That is the reason why from the beginning itself uh, the importance of Guru has been given in Sanatana Dharma. Precisely for the reason that uh, the tests that are there for us, because uh, Gita will be telling what things it will be telling. Do karma and do, do uh, avoid karma like that. What is the significance of these two things? Don't do the karma also, it will be telling. There are certain things it will do this one and don't do also, it will be telling. In the same shloka also, it will, we, we will be coming across contrasting things. 
supposed to be apparently both are contradictory but both are being mentioned and then even paramatma as a description also like that anuraniyam at the same time he is the greatest of the great person smallest of the small person he is visible not visible like that what is more important is that all these things in order to understand all this is you need to rely on gurus number one second thing is that if gurus if we don't get gurus at least we need to do some what is called some vimarsana granthas something we need to do, uh, read maybe there are some good vimarsana granthas are there from mahabharata varanasi subramanyam shastri there is one gentleman is there he has written six volumes of mahabharata discussing all this dharmas because there are some persons who can visualize all these things who can see from the perspective of dharma they can see and they can write and there is maladi chandrashekhar shastri mahabharata vimarsanam is there in english i did not find good books i did not find over this because my research area is mahabharata from the beginning wherever i see ekam akra sai have seen some of these this varana subramanya shastri book is a great book six volumes it is there then there is one person by name maladi chandrashekhar shastri is there he has written Mah- mahabharata vimarsanam he has written that is also a very good book there are a couple of persons and uh, i there is one blog one person will be writing from uh, Uh, canada he is writing i don't remember i, I can't not correct his name sometimes he will be in touch with me and there are some he is writing in english and uh, the, you need to rely on those type of persons if you really initially you, you have to read all those things first and then start reading Mah- mahabharata then what will happen is that you will be learning the true import of Mah- Mah- mahabharata because mahabharata is called panchama veda wherein aspects of vedas upanishads and all these things are discussed if we not in order to understand those things paramatma and all this is something 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 is being discussed unless you have some knowledge of vedanta you can't understand mahabharata vedanta knowledge is very much required because that is why only for all our tests people tell that adhikara lakshanam it is there adhikari in order to become an adhikari for reading certain things you should have certain drill should be there that is called spiritual drill we are in need to undergo the spiritual drill if you undergo then only you can understand mahabharata ramayana and all this is a casual reading if you begin to read what will happen you will be coming across all the stories are appear to be the bad ones only a lot of um, uh, what is called things that which are uh, waste things something of that nature but thing is that these are some, some other meaning is there but this definitely you need to require a guru you should require or you have to listen to so many lectures of good people and at the same time or you have to Uh, what is called read good books then only you can understand real mahabharata otherwise you can't understand mahabharata so that is there if you are not the dharma and the dharma it is the question will not come because anyway you are in the mode you are you are attending to this class itself is a great significance that you wanted to have that spiritual till if that is there yeah, certainly we will understand that maybe we already i think you you are already having the knowledge you may be asking the question only for the sake of other persons i don't know but still you can definitely have that knowledge and the, all of us even when i started my journey in this life uh, in this journey also initially i was not knowing mahabharata started reading reading so many books so many lectures and all these things from different persons then we come across is some idea we come across and you can develop over it and then yuktya bharatam gneyam mahabharatam gneyam then you understand your own intellect and sometimes apply to the modern world also you can apply because from our own background because i am the background for management so from that perspective i see mahabharata in that way it comes sir i think this is the only thing i can tell okay thank you very much uh, now adepalli venkata varprasad ravi you can unmute and sir namaste guru ji namaste sir uh, it was again a very interesting session sir many of the doubts which most of the people had like uh, Ashwatthama, Mahatma, Kunjara, and that Hiranyakumar episode. Everything was once and for all. The clarifications are given. I am so thankful to you. Feeling blessed to be in your class. There is one uh, uh, clarification from you, from you, sir. Ashwatthama, after being uh, after he killed the Super Pandavas, was banished to the forest by Lord Sri Krishna. Can you throw more light on that? And about four or five years back, I have read a news item that uh, I think Ashwatthama was wounded in the forehead. and one particular ayurveda center near himalayas had noticed someone with that and 
there was a news item that is he still alive or something like that can you just throw more light on that i am just keen to know that yes sir rashantham actually after the entire battle is over he is known he is he has killed upapandavas he has killed drushtadimna and then uh, he did all this mischief and mistakes he has done at the time he aimed brahmastra that the story we know it afterwards krishna actually banished him you go there and be there in the uh, forest for many number of years then he prayed mercy and he told that he may be another 3000 years i believe sir i don't know exact figure i have i don't remember to the test and you will be there in the forest then you can be on your own form until then you will not be visible at all like that he told and then he went out like that only i had it i, I saw it in the, the book he was not visible for number of years i don't exact number i don't know and i have to see the book only and to that extent you will not be seen and afterwards you will be seen like that and this he actually he is still visible in girnar forest is there gujarat girnar forest is there there people still believe that he is still wandering in that particular spot there are some people there are some lectures only i have also heard that some persons went uh, saw him like that uh, but i also went to girnar forest i have not seen it because i don't have the, uh, that that much i have not i have not been blessed girnar forest i went only for this purpose only when i was in gujarat i was working in gujarat area in my earlier stint of career and i went there girnar forest through the forest i wandered but uh, Uh, no, but, but because there are some few people tell that even Parashurama for that matter he is still alive people tell and he is wandering and uh, Ashwatthama also people tell but Chiranji was there, there are Chiranji, I don't know sir, really and whether he is still alive or not alive but the people tell that he is a Chiranji, Ashwatthama, Balir Vyasa, Anumanas, Chavivishana, Purpa Parashurama, Saptaite, Chiranji, that stroke I said. And then according to you, if the tradition is believed, he is, he is alive, but whether he is, which forest he is wandering, we don't know, but people tell that he is in our forest. Gujarat, if you go, people will be telling all the time that this is the place where Ashwatthama will be wandering. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir, because it what, is, about, uh, what about that injury at the forehead which Krishna inflicted, is that true? Yes, it is true. It is true only, sir, because it is a Brahman, because he is worthy to be killed. But Brahman is not to be killed like that. They felt like that at that time. Even though he has committed all the mistakes, why should we kill a Brahman? Oh. Okay. And that is the only reason. That, uh, that is one more way. It is as good as killing the person. So the thing is oh. that you do some other thing. And then in order to, it is as good of killing him only in that way he was punishing that mundana is he is a mahabharata sir it is there. thank you sir thank you for the clarification yes sir yeah thank you uh, now i request uh, pompati dr pompati chakrabhani garu you can ask your question Yeah, Chitrapandi Garu, you can unmute and talk. Thanks a lot, sir, for your kind lecture. I'm very fortunate enough to be in your class. One thing I could address are two points in your class, sir. One is that the person who is with a great personality, if he supports Adharma, it cannot be tolerated. Yes, sir. And moreover, for to save God Dharma, if If it, if it is possible, you can go for Adharma also to say for Dharma. Is it sir? These two points I could understand with your lecture. Yes, sir. Is it true? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For that matter, killing of Dharma or elimination of Bhishma and all this is sir, only for the purpose of supporting the overall Dharma to establish overall Dharma. Dharma. Because they are fighting on the side of the Adharmic people. The Adharmic people cannot yes, be supported. That is the only reason, sir. Yes, sir. We have got dharma. We can follow dharma also if it is permanent. If it is inevitable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If sometimes even killing of uh, suppose a serpent is there, it is there in the house. It is it is okay to kill the serpent in order to save the lives that is there because you can't leave it like that. Yes. And uh, that is how it goes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, no, if it is if it, it is a crime, if it doesn't matter to kill him, isn't it, sir? I I could not understand you, sir. Thing. If a criminal, if he has uh -huh. taken some step, uh -huh. if any person does a crime, uh -huh. he is supposed to get a punishment. Uh 
Yes, he has to get a punishment. If he is uh, escaping, uh, if he is escaping, also somebody should kill him. That's all, isn't it? Somebody. Uh, if he is, if anybody kills him, also it is not a punishment. But it is for the sake of dharma. If a person is escaping, for the sake, for the sake of dharma. We can kill him also, no problem, sir. It is not. It is not wrong, sir. It is not wrong also because sometimes, sir, at the same time, you should know that he is really a killer. That is it. Because in Mahabharata only we come across a story. Uh, if he is, uh, if he is, uh, if he is, if he is, if he is a real, he is a real criminal. criminal means he deserves. He deserves if it is a he deserves punishment only, sir. He deserves punishment only. He should be. He should be treated in that fashion only. Yes, yes. sir. If anybody, anybody must have matter. If all anybody kills him, also they should not be given. If at all, right. if at all anybody kills him, also they should not get punishment. No, sir. Right. I say. I think the point is understood. So uh, there are laws. No, if, if other, a person no, does, no, sir, please, please, sir. Please, sir. There are laws and everything that yes, govern the entire present framework. So in that framework of Mahabharata, maybe there are frameworks wherein you can kill a person who is committing a crime. But not now. If you don't, if you sir, my point is that, yeah. sir, 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 my point is that even our framework also it is wrong, because uh, sorry, I'm saying I'm not a person to uh, say anything. This my op opinion. I'm telling, if a criminal, he gets, he does a crime. It is proved that he is a criminal. He got escaped from the jail. Of course, suppose if at all anybody kills him by accidentally. Yes, I know I got the accidentally point. Accidentally, I uh, wanted to yes, yes, I got. Now I got the point, sir. But this actually, and the other person should have the firm faith. He should be knowing that he has really committed a mistake. Really yes, committed. Sir. It is proved. It is proved by the government. It is proved by the court. Uh, and he yes, escaped from the jail. If yes, he sir, escaped yes, from the yes, jail. Yes, sir. He escaped from the other person. Can he kill it or can he not kill it? There is one more discussion is there in Mahabharata. Only we come across a story. And the story. I think the time is there. If people permit, I'll tell you that a small story only I'll be telling. There was a king. The king was in the habit of giving food to some persons, and then only he was eating. On one occasion, it so happened that two atithis came to his place. When two atithis came to his place, the king asked the cook, the, the cook to prepare the food. The only two persons were there. The cook asked his wife to prepare the food in the house. And when she prepared the food, she brought the food from the, that place. When he brought the food from that place, what happened? No, while he was taking the food in his basket, normally what is his practice? He was doing in that way, way only. He was bringing the food. When he was bringing the food, it so happened that on the same day, there was an eagle was catching hold of a snake. The snake was emitting poison. The by, by virtue of that struggle between the snake and the eagle, one poison drop has fallen on the food. Nobody was observing it because he was carrying the food in good intention. The food was served to the guests, and the two guests died on the spot. The crime has taken place. Who is responsible for the crime? The king is responsible. The king is not responsible because he has asked to cook the food. Cook the food. Cook has asked his wife. Wife has prepared with good intention. Food is also, she has. She she is not responsible. The person who is carrying the food is not responsible because he, all all the time he was bringing in the same fashion. He is it the responsibility of that eagle? No, it, eagle is taking its own prey. Is it the responsibility of the snake? The snake is also not responsible because it was trying to come out of them, the clutches of the eagle. And the, the matter went to the Madam Raja. Madam Raja could not understand this problem. He just postponed the case. Okay, we don't know because crime has been committed. Here, what you are telling is that crime has been done by some person. Then what happened? No, at the time it went on for some days. No, no, no person could be identified, but crime has been committed. Means somebody has to take the responsibility. Then who has to take the responsibility? It was going on like that. At the time, and one day two guests came to that place again. They were inquiring about the place of the king. Where is the king? Where is the king? Like that. They were going on like that. One lady stood there and told, "There, that is the king's place. You go there." But the king is in the habit of giving poison to the people like that. She told. Then my Yamadhar Maharaj told, "Put all the sin to her account." So here, when the other person, what you are telling is that a criminal has escaped from the clutches of the judges, from the clutches of the police, and he was going out running away. Then can some other person can kill him? The some other person should have the conviction that he is a real creator, a criminal. Otherwise, you should not tell. You don't have any data. It is the data that is given by the government. Government data, how can you rely? 
especially in the present day situation where government data and media data is all polluted data only. I don't know. Sometimes it is good, sometimes it is bad. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Unless you have the clear conviction that he is a real criminal, you can't kill him. Now here also the same thing happened. Here this lady doesn't have any data. She, she is not having any data. And she was just like that she was telling yes that is only there, there is a king's house is there there you can go king will serve you food it's good but to that extent she should have stopped she was telling without knowing anything she was telling that even the mother of Raja could not decide because she was deciding the case she was really that is his uh, king is in the habit of giving poison then the mother of Raja told put all the sin to her account the sin whatever crime, crime has taken place the entire crime the sin has to go to his, her account same thing happens to us also if we are going to kill any person who is who has been decided by the judge and who has been decided by the people as a criminal sometimes he may not be there because who are you to decide it unless you are having the clear conviction unless you have the full data unless you have read all these things and unless, how do you prove that you are having that knowledge that is also there no sir because when we are killing, some other yeah. person is killing, you should have the ability to judge whether you are having the ability to judge it. This, this type of many things are there. And all those things are to be analyzed. Then only you have to take a decision, sir. Is what I, and that is in the given situation, what more uh, is yeah. in the, uh, this sir, is the, sir, sir, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, sir. My small version is that. If he's if he's to be a terror or criminal. A lot criminal. Of, the others are waiting, please. Hey, only one, one minute, sir. Right. Only one minute, sir. One minute. If he's a terrorist or criminal, it is proved that he was imprisoned and he was escaping, escaped from the jail. Right. Somebody sees him and kills him. Right. Whether the person gets punishment or not, should get or not. Some other person should have the conviction that he has really done it, sir. That is it. He should really yes, that he, has, he has done some other work. The Tazarma people, one one person killed the Tazarma people. Well, you may be having grudge against that particular person. You may be killing. Not grudge. He doesn't know. We, he doesn't. He got a job by chance. He killed him. That because that Tazarma uh, people seen that he killed him. Whether yeah. it should be appreciated I think, or I, should I be think the, the discussion is going on for long. Please, you have been explained enough by Rajarao Garu. Yes. Now the you have to take sir, a decision. Say, very please, sensitive please. questions, sir. Supreme yeah, Court also. No, 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 no. You go to Supreme Court and get those convictions. But here, <laughs> Dharma has been explained very well. And now allow others to try, clarify their doubts. Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank Gautam, you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Gautam Mukherjee. You can go ahead. No, sir. sir. So actually, uh, I have... Uh, yesterday itself, I was uh, thinking... Somebody, I was curious. Uh, I, I do not... Uh, these, these things are not discussed in Mahabharata. That, uh, see, uh, in case of Kangsha, it is discussed. Uh, he is a very bad king and he used to always torture people and uh, uh, with, with, with women and so many things. So it is uh, shown in the serial Ramayana also. But uh, regarding Durjadhan, uh, that uh, uh, sometimes in the part uh, when uh, Pandavas were uh, this, uh, they, are, they were the king of uh, Indrapastra. He was uh, controlling the Hostinapur. Even after uh, they uh, went to exile, he got the Hostinapur plus Indraprastha. It is never mentioned how, as king, how was if he was a good king or bad king. His interaction with uh, uh, Pandavas are always there. That is, they came sometimes to uh, uh, the place of uh, Pandava and they started to torture him, or they again they got. Uh, the got some fight or something like that, but never as uh, in Hostinapur and uh, Indrapastha letter, how uh, Durjodhana was uh, there in the uh, as a king was a very bad king, always torturing people or managing nicely. This thing can you say? Durjodhana, as far as possible, he is wherever we come across in Mahabharata. Durjodhana was a very kind, benevolent king as far as people are concerned. People are concerned. He was a very benevolent king. He was ruling the country, very happily he was ruling. And one more thing is that he has told, two or three occasions he has told, that Dhritarashtra will be telling on one occasion, very specifically he will be telling. Because the kingdom belongs to Pandavas only. Initial stage, when Dharmaraja was about to be uh, about to become with uh, your Raja, that is called uh, to be crowned king. At the time, Dhritarashtra very clearly telling that the crown doesn't belong to us. 
it belongs to Pandraja only and he is ruling the country, he is taking care of all the people, he is a very pleasant king, Dharmaraja is proving himself as a great king, as a Yuvaraja itself. Then how can we take the people from to our side? Then he was telling that, no, father, don't worry about it. I have been giving enough money to the elder persons. I have been enough dhana and also other things also to give him. Because Koshagara, he was in the hands of Duryodhana at that time. Even the Dharmaraja was Yuvaraja. The Koshagara, that is called the finance department, was in the hands of Duryodhana only even then. Then he was telling that why, because I am in control of the finances, I am giving enough money to all the persons I am giving. I am taking care of all Brahmins, giving the influential people, or I am taking taking care of those persons, I am converting to them to my side, don't worry all this is. Like the details, like that present day rulers, what they will be doing is that they will be doing all small, small doors they will be giving out to different persons. It is supposed to be the good government only. Because it is a it is money is from the government money only. Government money you are doling, doling out to some persons. When you are giving the money to some people, people will be happy persons. Normally, people in Mahabharata times or present day times are very happy people as long as they are given quite good amount of money. Even now also, influential people are given good money and they are they are asked to write articles in the newspapers. People in order to convert this. These these things are happening even now also. It is happening. Mm -hmm. Those times also it happened, Duryodhana was telling it twice. One more occasion also he'll be telling, I am giving enough money to the people, the people are on my side, don't worry. No, what else, the, my, my thing is that, um, see, people, some many, many times people ask actually, that what was the outcome of the whole Mahabharata war? We lost so many, uh, many very beers, beers actually. And as a result, the uh, India became very uh, poor in the Virta. Now they uh, and they got the outside inv uh, invaders. We could not fight them because uh, there are uh, that the culture has went. Uh, uh, the culture is lost so much. Uh, we uh, only Arjun was, uh, Pandavas remain only. There's so many other beasts uh, and Kauravas, but both sides they all died. Had them be there, they probably. Uh, many, nowadays we see even worse people than uh, worse people than Duryodhana, Karna, and so on. Karna was a uh, Danvi. so uh, in some aspect he was a he was a great person. In many aspects, people were uh, great. They were killed, but we are now we are tolerating even much worse person than them. We got Hitler after that. We we got so many invaders from. Uh, just after those uh, that thing, I think. Yeah, I think so, uh, can can yeah. that be? Uh, could that be? The war could be avoided somehow, and that that is the question. Money to remain the remain India powerful to uh, keep yeah. India powerful. Was it possible? But actually, when Adharma is there, the very purpose of Sri Krishna Savatara is Paritranaya Sadhu na Vinasaya se Dushkrutam. That is, he has to establish Dharma in the Vinna. Ascendancy of Rajasika and Tamasika forces are there, they have to be suppressed at any point of time. That is the message of Mahavartha. Not that many persons have killed. How many persons are killed is not material, it is not material what I believe. Thing is that the Adharmi people have today, because in order to kill other Adharmi persons, Dharmi persons also will get killed. That, that, that is there. Is so, Dharma has to be established. Because if you leave them like that, what will happen? There are many, many forces of that nature will be there. We have inherited a culture wherein we will be feeling that even now also, it is okay to leave the people who have committed the mistake. Even the person has done a criminal, criminal activity, leave him like that. That activity is not there. So, no, yeah, not not leave him like that. I didn't mean that. There, there should be some ways to money, hear them, money, rectify them. That should be always should have been. Mahabharata is not necessarily it is from the perspective of this Laukika. Uh, right, that is, is the thing. thing there is some other some other area spiritual, of spiritual spiritual meaning of that. Those uh, there are some pavitri and so on. There, there yeah. is some other there some other way is also there. Salukika. Yeah, that is that is the message that I wanted to hear. What is the framework of gods and what is the framework of uh, asuras at that time? Who born as Deva? Who born as Asura? Why Karna was there? Even the sun, Surya sun, he was there on the side of uh, Dharmic persons. This, this is some other way it, it is to be discussed. Your spiritual meaning is there. Deep spiritual meaning is there. Not so, actual, some, some actual, actual, actual one. 
And I know it is not, time is right. not there to discuss that aspect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now uh, Shekhar, please ha uh, have your question in a uh, crisp way so that we can allow others. Thank you. Shekhar. Namaskar, Guru Garu. Sir, Manamu uh, Ashadhama Brahma. Please, please have your question in English in case if it's possible. Thank you. Sir, be being a Brahman in Ashadhama, Sri Krishna is now. Uh, uh, Pandavas were not killed uh, Ashwadhamma. Whereas uh, his father Drona is also a Brahmin but killed the Arjuna. How it to correlate to Samanvayam? Yes, sir. Drona was killed and Ashwadhamma was not killed. So Drona, ah, was yeah. killed. Drona was killed in the battlefield, sir. Because battlefield, he has to fall down. Otherwise, war will not end. But here, Ashwadhamma, it is a guide of the war. There is no necessity of killing him here because even if he's surviving or uh, not surviving, it doesn't matter much. Already Duryodhana has been killed. And the possession of the uh, land has come to them because they have actually won over their own uh, kingdom. When they have won over the kingdom, there is no necessity of killing this man. At that time, it is required because killing of Dronacharya is required. Otherwise, they cannot win the war. They have to win the war in order to protect dharma at that time. So there he has to be killed. But here war is already over. Why to kill unnecessarily one person? Not required. That is there, no sir. Because why, why to kill unnecessarily? Even if he is alive also, no problem. Yeah. Battle is over, no sir. Battle is over. In the battlefield, has he, been, has he been there in the battlefield? Some way has to be found out to kill him also. That is there. But yeah. war is already over. There is a necessity of killing a person, not required. Okay, thank you. Uh, Biyatsu Murtigar, you can unmute and talk. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I want to doubt this, Jabai, how Jarasandha was uh, deciding to fight uh, with Bhima, yeah, though he is a wrong man, a very bad person. Similarly, Duryodhana also for, selected to fight with uh, uh, Bhima instead of fighting with the inferiors. So yes. how uh, the bad people could uh, uh, they have decided in a good way because uh, uh, yes, sir. otherwise uh, done. Sir, in Mahabharata times, uh, even though bad people, they are bad, they are also having some dharmic principles for their sake. To some extent, uh, Dharma was there, all the places it was there. They, they were also not wanted to deviate totally Dharma and all this. Is. That is why there is some brighter, what is called brighter aspects of those persons. Jarasandha selecting Bhima, Duryodhana selecting Bhima and all these things are, they are also basically the society of that nature is actually what we can call a dharmic society only. Partly it is a dharmic society because we are seeing only Mahabharata. Mahabharata in times people, how people were there, so totally we don't know all these things. Because in, in Mahabharata we don't come across the way the people were there and all these things we don't have. Because only peripheral only we will be coming across. So Duryodhana, even though a bad man, he will be having some good things. And uh, similarly Jarasandha. No, naturally, he must have asked. One more thing is that it is inferior and this part, even if he kills uh, the Arjuna, Nakul, Nakula, and whoever it may be, people in future may tell that this man has just killed this person and has come to the throne. But also, he doesn't want to have it. If he kills, kill Bhima Sena only and come to the power. And Dharmaraj has given him an option. Out of five Pandavas, you choose any one person, fine. But if he chooses an inferior person and he wins over the battle, what future generations of the people will be telling? That is one thing. Second thing is that he has lost all the persons by that time. Nobody is there with him. All his brothers have died, all his sons have died. Everybody has died. He is the only person surviving. And of course, Ashwatha want all these persons. And what is the necessity of uh, living and ruling the country there? That is also one thing is there. Many things must have gone in his mind. He only Bhima Sena at that time. Otherwise, he could have selected easily, he could have selected one person, he could have defeated even Arjuna Dharmaraja, whoever it may be, he could have defeated. But he did not take all those persons because he has to, he is responsible for the people. But ultimately, king is responsible for the people as a whole. That is also there. 
people will what people will think that also he has to think over number one second thing is that this is also there some sort of brighter features of the, the, that person that is also there many many things must have gone in his mind then only he must have taken that decision that is what i believe sir thank you now i think uh because you can ask your question and you yeah uh, namaste mode very very nice uh lee you said about mahabharata very enlightening um as everybody is uh, inclined towards uh, the violence aspect of things uh, my take is slightly different uh, after mahabharata people inclined towards peace more and then there was uh, uh, buddhism jainism that came after that and uh, because of that peaceful mindness like uh, aggressors came and broke all the temples and everything so somewhere the whole dharma dharma uh, fight to save dharma take, took a back seat but then now it's again coming back uh, but hopefully still people should take you know only the people who are entitled to fight should fight not every common man should fight um, um, uh, a serious fight uh, they should do their dharma so how do you see this sir like uh, the transition like uh, is there a, a price in people you know waking up uh, becoming a bit more aggressive uh, now and uh, in a way it's good to save uh, the dharma to save the temples to save our culture you know there has to be a, a you know a strict hand uh, somewhere which was not there in the past the, the, the throughout the history of medieval india what we can call now that the throughout the history people uh, the, from the beginning people are actually suppressed by the sword by means of the sword only they were suppressed because aggressive mm -hmm. people have coming here and then here again like like the present day society they are also there are intellectuals who are going to different uh, different sides even now also so many intellectuals in india particularly whatever they see is that they are on the payrolls of some other persons and uh, uh, all these things are we are witnessing now also we are witnessing the similar situation was there from the beginning because basically the uh, the society is such that it is it is a free hand is there for us free hand is there for us and there we are not bound by any rule regulations and all these things so much of freedom is there in in this religion because of this reason what happened is that there are the other religions if you compare with our religion other religion there is a prescribed protocol is there prescribed structure is there if a, something is told in the vatican that is being followed here also because the structure is such that it is a structured religion are there everywhere we can go hierarchy is there structure is there and all these things are there but we don't have hierarchy we don't have any structure even a small poor in a small village need not listen to any with anything that is told by the higher person because everybody is having his own freedom freedom is there. so much of freedom is there in hinduism because of this reason there are some intellectuals interpreting of the scriptures it is in a bad way that is a problem interpretation is actually being done from the perspective of materialist perspective and also this communist perspective so what will happen ultimately is that reading the scriptures as per the uh, hermeneutics is there, you know these people tell that in the way of understanding the scripture is hermeneutics they tell hermeneutics is the way the, uh, the scripture has been written down in that mode only our mind should go and then we have to understand that particular scripture then only we can understand the real meaning of that scripture so if you begin to read a uh, bhagavad gita from the communist perspective it doesn't give any scope for understanding that picture you have to understand it in the way that is being told in that way, mode only our mind should go and then we have to understand it that is not being done that is the reason why many intellectuals unnecessarily interpret mahabharata ramayana and all these things just seeing the story not the background of the story and from the beginning of the story the narrative also they don't they will not be seeing only a, a few pics only they will be taking some book over there they pick it and they try to talk about ramayana and they pick it madhavi story and try to analyze the entire thing about mahabharata madhavi story is a small story that is there in galava for, for why it is there in mahabharata the small story they pick it up and they say that uh, the woman in that particular in the entire mahabharata period was actually they were denigrated den denigrated they were suppressed this type of these comments will be coming across by seeing only a single aspect not seeing the picture as a whole narrative they will not be seeing that is a problem 
with mahabharata ramayana and all these things that is okay. the only reason sanatan dharma has to be spread 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 like that okay. yeah yeah i think that, that's the right way i think we are learning out of time uh, chakrapani garu uh, uh, let it be very crisp we are running out of time sir in tibet bodhism was there the people were so peace lovers what happened china one in one day china occupied the tibet they could not resist though we are peace lovers though we are for dharma we should be positioned in a position to resist the dharma and the invaders yes sir isn't it sir you will have to resist sir even also i believe that whenever the dharma is actually trying to gulp our own system then uh, you you need to do certain things only because that is the only idam brahmam idam chatram we will tell no sometimes we have to do all these things we have to do because you know unless our every existence is at stake at the time we need to protect the dharma unless we don't protect it what will happen is that in the name of peace we cannot uh, Uh, what we can call afford to lose the uh, uh, sanatana dharma as a whole because in many, many other countries if you see greece and other places the civilization has been destroyed our civilization is still intact because of so many other reasons because they could not destroy buddhism was destroyed because in india it was destroyed because another nalanda university was burnt but here uh, the, the english persons or whoever it may be they can't kill all the persons all the pandits who are actually passing on this uh, sanatana dharma traditions by oral ways they are pronouncing pronouncing it was going on different persons how many persons they can kill it is not possible that even the still it is surviving it is survive, surviving with all vibrations it is surviving still no wars it is surviving but because generations and generations the we and we can't, can't say that even uh, the way the freedom fighting went to place in india also they have not understood the component of uh, bhagavad gita what i feel still mahatma gandhi one who is doing like we should not take the names of course but he bhagavad gita never told that you should not do violence we should do violence for the sake of protecting the dharma that is there but there is a but the two big comments of course all these things we should not discuss in the podium that is a separate analysis we have to do it right then that is there sir that is how sometimes you have to you have to be aggressive also you have to be aggressive unless unless we his that is ramakrishna paramahamsa small story is there now he will be advising the serpent i never ask you not to hiss i advise you only not to bite that is a, you have to hiss at least hissing is also not there here the small story parable of ramakrishna paramahamsa it is there the snake parable is there he no? will be asking the snake i asked you not to bite but you can hiss all the time you have not hissed because of this reason you are suffering but we are suffering because of this reason only yeah i think uh, we have come to the end of a great discussion Uh, there are other comments from uh, participants also saying that uh, in mahabharata and all other, also other places bad persons have been given empty number of chances to correct themselves <laughs> i think that is a good part of what we should learn also uh, right uh, thank you very much uh, nagar uh, nagaraj dogar for this great lecture and so tomorrow we'll again come back on the same note on the last day of and thanks once again to all the participants for the active discussion and uh, thank you dr rajaraver for nagraj raver for taking time to clear all their doubts most of it has been clear thank you very much thank you i think we can now close uh, i am sorry uh, prarthana by anantan gar i think yeah सुस्ति प्रजाभ्य पिपालयता मगेण महिम महिषा ओ ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु निोकास्मस्ता सुखि काले वर्ष तो पच्चन्य पृथ्वी सशालिनी ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भया अपुत्र पुत्रिण सन्त पुत्रिण सन्त पौत्रिण अदना सदना सन्त जीवन शरदाशत ओ सर्वे सुखि सर्वे सन्त निरामया 
सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चि दुख भाग भवे ओम असतोमा सद्गमय तमसोमा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओम शांते 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 ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुद्य पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य शांत शांत शांति हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ धन्यवाद डिवोशनल प्रार्थना नवी शानी जनगण मन जनगण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंधु गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उज्ज्वल जलधि तरंगा तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे